Hello, and welcome back to BBFL Competitive Balance. I'm your host, Stephen Leach, in the latest installment of all the stats you never asked for. It's been an interesting year in the BBFL, uh, to say the least, and it's now my ultimate pleasure to get to go through this again with you this year. I'm trying to keep it under the 50-minute video we hit last year, so let's hop into it with our playoff statistics through the year 2023 season. On in this first graph, success of each seed, the ones highlighted in pink are the ones we saw this year. My seventh seed and Bryce's six seed won games. Nick's five seed won a game, and um, well, Bryce won two games. Um, and then <clears throat> Chase, Chase, obviously, Benny Bull winner of this year. Over to the seed matchup and win history percentage. Uh, the ones that are highlighted in that lavender haze are seeds that we saw that saw action this year. Obviously, the ones right down the middle are going to see each other because those are the matchups we have every year. But some things of note. Um, the I'm looking at my notes here. Um, back to back number one seed champions. Back to back to back number six seed runner ups this year. And back-to-back -back number five seed making the semifinals. So pretty interesting there. There's some people shouting outside my apartment, so sorry about that. And the number two seed ends its five-year run of winning at least one playoff game. So rip to the number two seed there. Looking again at this graph. Um, first off, we got a seed Agami finally. If you look here, we've this is the first time we've ever had the six and the seven seed face each other with the six seed winning that match. Number one is still undefeated against both against the four seed, the five seed, the six seed, and the seven seed, but is winless against the three and seven and five against the eight seed, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, looking at the all-time scoring, first place still sits atop with the points uh, seven three one win percentage, nineteen and seven. Second, the two seed is still in second there. And the fifth seed retakes the third spot with a 12 and 10 record and a uh, win percentage of just over 500. The eight seed still hanging in there in the top four with an even 500 record there as we then head back down the ranks. <clears throat> the uh, Big Bowl Championship hangover, Nick won last year and he fell in the semifinals to this year's Big Bowl Champion Chase. So Chase is on the bubble to see. Um, if there will be regicide, we'll have a repeat or so. Someone will kill the king. I just noticed that my mic is unplugged, so we're going to go with the shitty audio. Sorry about that. First round stats. I did a little amending here. Um, I decided to take whatever the seed is versus their first round match. I don't. I, I started ignoring what the seed they were facing against was. Because there's been years where we have the... Um, Three takes the five, the three takes the six, that kind of thing. Um, looking around, we had to add, uh, we upgraded Chase here to the two time Vinny Bowl Championship, uh, 2012 and 2013, the first and the most recent. And we added a second tier down here, appeared in two bowls, but never won. Nothing changing in margin of victory. The three seed. His, uh, hasn't won a playoff game in four years now, which is the longest active streak in the league, followed closely by the eight seed, having not won a game since the fabled 2020 year. That should do it for playoff stats. Moving over to the meat and potatoes of this, all the numbers I'm sure you're loving to see, the 2023 competitive balance for the league. Starting off over here on the left, we have team abbreviations, and then wins listed down. This year, I didn't reorganize according to win percentage. I left it as just the rankings straight from ESPN. And there's certain places where I keep it there, so it's easy to keep track of, and other places where it gets resorted. We'll get to that. Um, looking at the win percentage, or uh, if you took a statistical analysis of winning percentage, ideally, um, everybody would have a 500 um, and when you run the standard deviation, I meant to look up the exact definition of standard deviation because I really have a hard time explaining that. Um, I have that written down here somewhere. 
but essentially the closer the actual standard deviation that's calculated is to the idealized standard deviation, which you'll see here is the average win percentage divided by the square root of the number of games, which is 14. The actual standard deviation of this uh, set was 1, 0.146 over the 1.34, so closer than in past years. You look at 2022, it was 0.17 above, so we're actually closer than expected. The NSC, that stands for the non scully Competitive Balance Measure, um, a 1.09. This is um, that's a value that I think is used more in basketball, in maybe college basketball, but in ideal league, in in an in an ideal world, the league's NSC would be 1.00, which means perfectly balanced, didn't win loss. Everybody goes 500 means everybody was perfectly balanced. Everybody had, you know, um, pretty balanced teams against each other. 1.09 is pretty good. It is the lowest it's been in four years. Um, jumping, we're going to jump now over to the point differential. Actually, um, I, I wrote notes to follow. Um, closer in difference in the high-low win percentage than last year. The highest was 0.64, the lowest was 0.28. If we look at last year, it was 0.7 to 0.1. So these two win teams going up against 10 win teams really skews the data there. And our margin of victory, oh yeah, I'm going to go into that later, but our margin of victory analysis, our de standard deviation there was 11.43. Um, ideally, again, it'd be zero because all games would end in ties if things were perfectly balanced. So uh, a margin of 11 points is, if you, if you were within 11 points winning or losing, you were within one standard deviation, which means you're pretty much right at the mean. Um, the average margin of victory this le this season was a 31.89, which is not much higher than it has been in the past. It's still pretty man manageable. We are going to jump over to the margin of victory sheet itself. This, again, is the same order as it was over in um, on the first sheet, just to keep those the same to help what you read. Net points is the sum of... All the points you scored versus all the points um, scored against you. So Chase scored 206 more points than all of his opponents combined. Bryson second scored 137 less points than everyone combined. Um, average point differential is exactly that. That's the average margin of victory for each team. Chase was winning games by an average of 14 points. I was winning games by an average of 13 points. Something... Uh, James here is a very interesting like uh, middle ground. He scored nine more points on the whole season than the, all of his opponents combined. It was just neck and neck on every game. So he was very, very, very close um, when you statistically anal uh, analyze it. Um, again, average margin of victory is 31.89. Um, this is a thing I started a couple of years ago. I'm not super into this stat anymore because um, it doesn't really mean anything. I would take like who I felt had the weakest start and the best finish and the flip of that, like he had started in two and two, like most of the league and ended up winning only two more games after that. But Chase, Kayla and uh, James all started also, also all also started off two and two and finished seven and three for a down and five rank. So I might not bring that back next year. I'm not totally sure. We're gonna jump over to the playoffs here before we get to like the new stuff. This is something I totally made up. Really doesn't have any, I think, statistical bearing, but it's just the uh, the playoff seed. Um, and my, my eat these anarchy values. So like the higher the value in this spot, the mo more chaotic the, the, um, the, the playoffs were. So like a value of one would be the eight seed beat the seven seed in the Benny Bull and the six and the five seed fought for the six seed beat the five seed for third place. And then the fourth place took the, to the fifth and the third place took, yeah, you know, you, you get it all the way down the line. Um, the one seed one, and it's it's calculated as, um, well, this whole fucking thing. But 
it's essentially you take the sum of this and the difference, um, like the two finished, what you'd, you'd expect them to finish at the two, they finished in the eighth, so it's a minus six, and it just normalizes. Um, it's, yeah, it's, you, you do this fucking math, which I don't totally understand anymore. Uh, EAV is 0.8, uh, 0.75, it's still not the highest. It's the um, matching the 2021 and 2018 tie, uh, scores. Second all-time all highest behind the 2016 year of 0.81. EAV history just is where it ranks, um, so it's it's tied for like second most, and that's the NSC value there again. <clears throat> Now this is the revamp. Um, as you'll rec you'll remember last year, it was the, um, I think it was the EPP, the EP's playoff push. I've itched, I've, uh, I've fine tuned it. I've taken out of all the bullshit that I put in there to make the numbers bigger. And it's boiled down to its core of what I wanted originally. And I've renamed it as the EAP's excuse formula or EAP. It's an adaptation of the simple rating system, which was developed by Pro Football Reference and like all their people it's designed for basketball seasons uh, with more games and, um, and an easier, and a, a more robust data set to calculate a team's strength of schedule. But it's it's really just the difference between a team's average margin of victory and a strength of schedule value. Higher ETH value, easier than what their path was to the postseason. Um, you can also look at it as a combination of a team's performance plus their luck. So, like, the lower their there's, uh, strength of schedule, which means easier opponents, which means lower points allowed per game. Not pints. We're not talking about beer here. Um, and strength of schedule... Oh, I can't even spell that right. A team's strength of schedule is calculated, which I thought I put it in here, but it's not. It's simply the, the your, a team's Average points allowed um, uh, <laughs> my brain's not working. It's the yeah, right, sorry. It's the average points allowed per game that your that your team had. Like for uh, like Kayla had her opponent scored an average of hundred and eight point four points against her. So um, subtracted so minus the league average points per game, which is 120 flat, which is very nice. So 108.4 minus 120, strength the schedule of negative 11.558. I just let them as negatives. I couldn't figure out how to scale them to like 1 to 100, so we're just going to roll with it. And your ETH value is really is just your margin of victory minus your strength of schedule. So um, Kayla's winning. She, she won games by an average of 19 points and her strength of schedule was negative 11 so her ETH score got bumped up to 31 which if we hop back if I miss anything and it is my explanation um, it's that's uh, the ETH is an adaptation of the simple rating system I didn't already say that so this is the ETH um, breakdown it's uh, this here this this here is the breakdown by it's organized by ETH score. So if we take um, Kayla's team for example, she had, she was winning by an average of 19.7 points. Um, her opponent she was scoring 131 points per game on average, which is 30 uh, 11 points over the the league average. And her opponents were scoring an average of 108, which was 12 points below the league average. So you put those together, you're going to get a, a very weak strength, uh, strength of schedule. And that big a blowout per game leads to a high ETH score. And so the green is going to be the higher scores, the red is going to be the lower scores. <clears throat> you look at someone like um, the hyphens here, an ETH score of 9.5, winning games by about 1.7 on average strength had a, had a weaker strength of schedule um but both his opponent both he and his opponents were scoring under the league average looking at someone like james who's right down the center uh an ETH value of 0.9 margin of victory average of less than a point strength of schedule 
just under one. <clears throat> um, he was scoring right at the league average, and his opponents were scoring right at the league average, so it was a nail-biter every day. Or every week, I'm sorry. And looking at someone like Scary Terry here for Bryce, an ETH value of negative 15, had, was losing games by an average of almost 10 points, um, and was uh, giving up over the league average and scoring under the league average. Um, another way you can look at this is if the league average is 120 points per game, and standard deviation is 6.6, .6, if you're within um, the mean, basically, if, you, if you're performing within expected levels, you would be within six points on either side of the... Um, that you'd be very close to the 120. So uh, having a uh, Kelsey, if we take the, the, the bottom wrong, I'm sorry, an ETH value of negative 25, um, losing games by about 15 points per game, which Ian was too, so this would be a good comparison. Um, Ian's strength of schedule was much lower because he was scoring closer to the mean his opponents were scoring closer to the mean than Kelsey's were, while also he was also scoring more than Kelsey was per game. So this can also be looked at like kind of a a, a luck, almost a luck metric. Um, the higher the ETH value, the easier the path to the postseason. It's pretty much just that. Um, I'm much happier with how that works now with, with that ETH value. Um, hopefully you guys find it at least interesting. If not, whatever. Um, you're not my mom. Let me jump over to the final section here, the coveted graphs. These are a lot of fun to put together every year. Um, spruce them up a little bit, put some guidelines along the top, and if you're ever interested, all the data is listed at the back half of this. Um, Excel workbook, that's what it's called. Um, I've also I also went through and on any one and on any graph on any graph that has all the teams on it, we have the um, everybody has the same color all the way through. Like James is always going to be red, Chase is always going to be that blue. I'm always I'm always going to be purple. So it's easy for you to track yourself over graphs. Here's the win loss over over time. Out, back out here in the olden days, there used to be a lot more fluctuation. Come 2017, 2018, there's really, there's not so much difference between the top of the pyramid and the bottom of the pyramid. Like, that's uh, one percentage of 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.2, from 0. 0.7 to 0. 0.29, 0. 0.79, 0. 0.21. A big break in 2022, and now we're pretty close between three teams at 0. 0.64 three teams of 0.29. That's about the closest it's been in years. I should go through and look like at a very detailed breakdown of that. Single season scoring, I added um, I added the vertical guidelines again, but I don't think I changed anything else here. Um, it's nice that Kayla actually has a line now instead of a dot. Um, closest our scoring has been together in a long time. Um, everybody a lot of people are like very close to the average, and this is the point of contention that was in the chat a little while ago. As you can see, the average number of points being scored is going up slowly, even compared to when we. All right, that doesn't really make sense, but this value is 1552. This was 1576, and this is 50, uh, 1578 to 1576, so essentially the same thing, uh, flat line. But we have seen increased scoring from year to year to year. Um, I think that's just more balanced play, uh, more experience, collective experience for the league's members, um, and, you know, more fun. This is my favorite graph out there, um, which doesn't seem to have saved one of my things on it, but that's okay. Um, and I've never explained it before, you see these little gold spots with the black outline, those are the championships. Um, I had it on the, uh, the, the, the key 
the legend, and it's not there right now, so I guess I'll have to fix that later. So here's the all-time above below 500. When um, uh, uh, Tuck's statistical outliner, uh, outlier really compacts everything down, um, but uh, things of note from the last gold dot, which is just sneaking in there. James continues the climb. Uh, who's that in green? Stu had an off year. Um, Sam had a great year. Chase had a big bounce back year. I maintain. I stayed right at seven and seven. Then I won a playoff game and I lost a playoff game. So I finished out right at the at the end again. Um, Kayla moves up to 500 all time. Uh, sneaks back up to the middle line. Bryce is, you know, he's what that's seven below 500 all time trying to get back up there. Uh, Makita's starting to still trying to get back out of that out of that rut. He's he's in there. Um, and Kelsey really gets lost in the in the the hustle and bustle here. But when and uh, yeah, no offense, talk when we take out the statistical outlier, it's a lot easier to to read. Kelsey, you're in there somewhere in that yellow and purple. Now, the unfortunate thing is when yours is exactly the same, <clears throat> you get a little lost. So you're probably, that's one, two, three, four. Which means you should be, you're either here or here. Is that you? Oh yeah, there you are. So you're, you're, I think you're right here. No, it's not right. You're probably right here. Or are you here? Anyway, you can go and look in, the, in the, all the data if you want to. So, again, I mean, this really highlights that. Did I not swap those? I have Sam and Nick swapped on here. Oh, well. I can fix that in post. Uh, this graph has been spruced up a little bit. This is the uh, point differential for Benny Bowl Championship games. Um, you'll see this white uh, number in the middle. I couldn't figure out a way to get a line that connects them two vertically, but that's the point differential, uh, like the average, the actual number, like difference between the winner and the loser. Um, margin of victory is the actual way to say that term. Um, after some closing up between 2019 through 2021, a total, let's see, what is that? A total margin of victory across those three years was 26 points. Last year we had a margin of 34, this year another margin of 34. So it's kind of been blown out a little bit in the last um, couple years. Average margin of victory, 29 points. Average winning score, 136. Average losing score, 107. So at least we're both over 100 on those. Um, not the last <laughs> two years though, unfortunately. This is one I thought about throwing out but I want I want to keep track in this this is the average number of moves made by a manager by final standing so um, this is the average th through our league's history the number one finishing manager on average makes 24 moves um, trades and, and and adds and drops and that kind of shit um, and then so and we still have this big pack up here at the front the ones that are wheeling and dealing that are willing to put their their money where the mouth is and try and get things moving and we have this outlet and then this these these twin towers back here of i assume desperation when you're when you're on the outs and you're trying to find anything to get your season going and you're just stuck you're going through injuries i assume that's what it is i'd love to figure out why there's such a dip here and then back up. I wonder if this is the drop off. This is your Benny Bull champion, your runner up, your third place, your fourth place team. When it gets to the fifth place, six, seven, then you're. This is just spec, pure speculation. When you get to the fifth, you get eliminated from the playoffs. It really doesn't matter anymore. It, we've re re revamped that now, so it's you do have something to fight for for that first round pick, but you really have nothing to play for there at the end of the season if you're stuck, if you get bounced. Um, 
and then here you're kind of nebulous, like you got a shot, maybe not. Again, pure speculation. I'd love to hear people theorize on that. On the right side, it's or this is the same information organized by manager. So um, James is really blown everybody out of the water with an average number of moves per season to 34. Uh, that's in the pink. The final standing, their, their average final standing in the league is in the blue, and their number of championships is in the gray. Um, final standing is really just taken straight for the ESPN website. Sometimes one of those gets flipped in our official standings, but I try and take it just along with that. Um, here we see, and then we see a lot of movement from these people, and then I guess our more conservative players. I'm very notorious about being about um, not liking to make a lot of moves, and I think Kelsey's numbers will go up, or not Kelsey, I'm sorry, um, Kayla's numbers will go up as she's in the league longer. Um, here we are at. Um, this used to be the last seven years because when we made that, it, we were um, that's right when we were like seven and seven, six and six, whatever it is. For when we had that big break of new, of like old versus new managers, but we're all pretty settled in now. Um, this is just the last four years. It's 2020 on. I I picked an arbitrary number to change it to, um, for no reason. This is kind of what this is what we looked like the last four years. This looks very similar to the graphs we were just looking at. Um, more action here in the back. And these five and the eight are still pretty low, which is very interesting to me. And then average number of moves in the last four years, final standing championships. Um, James has been increasing the last four years, surpri uh, not surprisingly. Stu's really jumped up there. Um, he's almost doubled and chase has been really wheeling and dealing um and i've you know i've finally you know tried to get off my ass um but we'll see and you know that pretty much does it uh, i'm gonna compact these all down into a zip file put it on my google drive so that you guys can look at them yourselves i highly recommend you if you can download them and pull them up in excel or in uh, what is it that the fuck that Apple has fucking like numbers? Um, shit, it's not sheep, it's Google. Because when you pull up the graphs on these, it gets it, it really fucks with the formatting. Um, even with when you pull up the balance sheet, it can really fuck with these numbers. So, and I've worked so hard to make this look pretty. So, thank you guys for watching. I tried to keep it short that time. Hopefully, I did it a little better. Hopefully, I did a better explanation of some of this math. If not, you know where to find me in the Discord. Peace.